Okay, what's up my guys? How you doing? Welcome back to another video on trigonometry based conduit bending. Thank you for returning and if you have been watching all the videos on this series, you should be, this is the third part. If you watch the uh, one and two, you can catch uh, finding the radius of a bender on part one and finding the center of a bend on part two. This is going to be part three, calculating the gain. You should go back and watch those other two if you haven't yet. All those, these three videos are gonna be in a part in order for you to be able to calculate how to actually do these bends on the center of the bend using the center to make all of your bends whether it be an offset a three-point shadow whatever the case may be this is particularly useful for bending rigid pipe threaded whatever the case may be even good with emt so uh just hang tight and i'm gonna get right down to it also i wanted to just mention that uh this is not a simplified method of conduit bending. If you're looking for a fast way to just, you know, learn how to bend conduit, this is not the video. Uh, this video was more for people that want to learn exactly where these multipliers came from and where the, you know, how to get more understanding on where this conduit bending, you know, really came from, you know, the trigonometry to it. Um, this is going to definitely take your game up. Your skills will improve whether you're an expert already or whether you're an apprentice. If you're an apprentice, I applaud you because this is going to really bring your game up. Uh, it is a little, um, detailed. You know, you will have to, uh, figure out how to do some trigonometry, which I'm going to show you. You don't have to actually go in start studying math in order to get this down i'm going to show you all the formulas and step by step how to do this but you do need to have a little bit of uh you know common sense when it comes to the math multiplication and, and you know so on but uh just hang tight and i'm gonna get down to it for starters let's just start off with uh an example for the sake of the video we're going to say that we are trying to bend a 30 degree kick with a three quarter pipe. We're going to be using the Klein bender, let's just say for an example. And that bender has a radius of five inches. Now, if you're asking how I got that number, you can go back to video one and it'll show you how to actually get the radius of whatever bender that you are using, whether it be a table bender, uh, a green leaf bender, an ideal bender, whatever the case may be, you, you can go to video one and I'll show you how to actually get the radius of that bender. Because keep in mind that all benders are not equal. Okay, just so that you know. Now back to the actual example. So we're bending a 30 degree kick on a three quarter pipe with this Klein bender and it has a five inch radius. We already calculated that. Fine. Now to get the gain for any bend less than 90, because you do know, I'm pretty sure if you don't know, I have a video on that as well, but for a night, gains are not only used and found for 90 degree bends. You can actually use and calculate a gain on any bend less than 90 as well. If you didn't know that, I'm about to show you how to get that now. <clears throat> so, first step that we have to do to get this gain would be get the developed length. Okay, the developed length of that bend. Some of you might think of when you when you hear developed length, you think of segment bending. Well. In the methods that I'm going to be showing you in this, on, in all these videos, we we are using the developed length for every bend. Okay, and it goes as follows. So the formula goes 0 0.01745 times the radius of the bender, which we just said was five. If yours is different, you just fill that in, times the degree of bend. The degree of bend being 30 in this example. For you, it might be differently. 
So moving along, 0 0.01745 times 5 inches times the 30 degree bend gives us 2.6175 inches. Now you might want to round that down to only try to have two numbers after that decimal. Okay, so it comes out to 2.62 inches. Now what you want to do here is just store that. And don't forget that we'll get back to that in a minute. We're going to need that in a second. <clears throat> Before we get to that, we're going to have to actually get to the opposite sides of the triangle. Now, before we continue on with the next step, I want to just explain a little bit here. So the developed length, you already know the formula. I'm showing it to you here. This is the formula for the developed length. What we're trying to get is we're trying to get this part here on this figure on the left side of your screen that has the DL. This is what we're actually trying to get. We're trying to get the developed length of this part of the bend. You know, which that's what we're trying to calculate here. <clears throat> we're also trying to calculate the, the this part of the game, which we're going to call, this is the opposite side of the triangle, which we're just going to, for the sake of the video, we're going to call it K. So this, this triangle here has actually two parts to it. And when you actually get the developed length and uh, and you calculate the side opposites of these triangles and you deduct it from each other, that's what's going to give you the game. Now that I've explained that to you, you know what the developed length is and what it is that I'm trying to accomplish here. So now, you should also know the side opposites, what I'm meaning by the triangle. There's two triangles that I showed you before, and that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get the side opposites of those triangles. Okay, and calculating that goes as follows. The radius times the tangent of degree of bend divided by 2. So that's going to be step 1 in figuring out the opposites of those triangles. And it goes as follow. As we keep going, we're just simplifying the calculation, the formula. So it's 5 inches times the tangent of 30 divided by 2. So what I do is, off the rip, what I do is I just take my, my 30 degree bend and I just half it. It makes it a lot simpler. So all I need to do now is I just need to find the tangent of 15 degrees. So automatically, I just have it, and now I just simplified the formula to tangent of 15 degrees. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to take 5 times the tangent of 15 degrees, and it's going to give me this here, which is 5 times 0.2679. The 0.2679 is the tangent of 15 degrees. Now, when I calculate this formula, it comes out to 1.339 inches. So that is the answer to one of my opposite sides of the triangle. Now, in order for us to get the total of both of them, <clears throat> all you have to do is times it by 2. And that comes out to 2.68 inches. That is the answer for the total of the opposite size of that triangle. We already have the answer to the developed length. Now all we have to do is take our two answers and deduct them from each other, subtract them. That's basically it. Now to show you what's going on here is both of the Ks minus the developed length, which is both of the opposite sides of the triangles, the minus the developed length equals our gain, which is, these. this is the answer to both of our opposite sides of the triangle, 2.68 of an inch, like we said down here. And we're going to subtract that from our developed length, which comes being 2.62 inches. And that gives us an answer of 0 
inches, which is our gain. This is using a three quarter Klein bender to make a 30 degree kick. So that's the gain for a 30 degree kick on a Klein bender. Now, just a reminder, I want you to actually read this here. Don't forget that when you actually do the calculation for the opposite sides of the triangle, that you have when you're done, you want to multiply that by two. Okay, because when you're doing that calculation, that's only for one triangle and you have two of them. A lot of people get mixed up and they forget and they don't understand why it's not coming out right. You have to multiply by by two. Okay. Now, to give you a quick example on how to do it on the calculator, your calculator might be different, but basically it's all the same. So, let's just say we want to calculate the developed length to the example we just did. Well, we would go and put 0 0.01 1745 times the radius of the bender, which is 5, then we will multiply that by the degree of bend. The degree of bend being 30 degrees. 30, and we get the answer, which comes out being 2.62, pretty much, after rounding it up. Okay, now for another example, let's try to get the opposite sides of one of the triangles so the formula is radius of bender times the tangent of the degree of bend divided by two okay so like i said before off the rip we want to take the tangent of the degree of bend being 30 and we're just gonna half that right away we're gonna divide it by two right away so our is gonna be five which is the radius of our bender five inches and we're going to multiply that by the tangent now this i want to show you the tangent if you don't know how to get it is you press this tan button and then you enter the degree of bend which i said is going to be 15 because we're going to half it correct then you want to close the parentheses by pushing the other side of the parentheses and there you go that's it and you find the answer and it comes out being 1.339 same answer we have on the screen on the other screen before okay so i just want to make that clear if you have if you don't know how to use the trigonometry functions on the calculator i'm pretty sure you can find that on any video on youtube but other than that, I, from what I've showed you here, you can pretty much get the answer going. So let's just try one more time. Let's go the radius of the bender, which we're going to do it for the opposite sides of the triangle again, times the tangent, tangent, and you enter the degree of bend, close the parentheses, and that's pretty much it. That's it. You're going to need to know how to use the trigonometry functions for all these videos. If you would like for me to do a video on how to use the trigonometry functions of the calculator, just send me a comment and I'll do so. So here I have an example on a conduit. You can see this mark here would be our start of bend. This is our end of bend and this would be the center of the actual bend. Now this is going to be important because as you can see in other videos i'm going to show you how to actually make some bends whether it be an offset or a three-point saddle or whatever the case may be by using the method of using the center of bends now like i showed you in video two finding the center of the bend center of bend is crucial because you could end up and it's useful you could end up using this center of bend. Once you know where it is, now you have to add your front of hook measurement, whether it be for a Klein bender, a hand bender, hydraulic or mechanical, you have to find that 
by using the method I gave you in video one. Once you find your measurement for the front of hook, then all you have to do is add it to the start of bend. Let's just say for an example, it's an inch and a half. From this mark here, the start of the bend, or whichever way you're gonna place your bender, you add the inch and a half mark. From that mark, you place that on your bender, you bend it, and you're gonna have your bend, the center of bend, exactly where you want it to be. Now, this is very useful because you once you know where the center of bend is gonna be, you can place your conduit in the bender and whatever direction you want to place it in.